Hey guys, XJ here. So today I'm going to explain the contents of the iRacing paint template. So let's get started. If this is your first time to the channel, I'm XJ. I cover sim racing topics and golf club repair. If you're interested in either of those two topics, please consider hitting that subscribe button and check out the videos on the channel. So today for this example, we're gonna use the 1987 NASCAR Monte Carlo. Now, how do I know that that's this file? Well, if you follow the tips from the other video, you're gonna know the naming convention does not always align with what the car is, nor completely identify it. So if you haven't watched that video regarding template downloads, you might wanna check that out. So let's go ahead and open up this file. And this is just the base file, but this will also work in other programs. When you open the file, you'll notice three folders here to the lower right. Custom spec map, turn off before exporting TGA, and paintable area. Let's talk about the paintable area first. Right now, you're just seeing the base template and a base color blue. But if you will open this folder, you will see the paint de uh, the car decal, excuse me. You'll see the helmet base. You'll see the color change copy, which will vary from car to car. And you'll see the color change bits. It doesn't look like this is doing anything for this car, but it will for some. Others, it won't do much or if anything at all. All of these are adjustable should you choose. Just keep in mind that these are the base stickers. If you make changes here and then save your paint and upload it to our racing, those changes will be in the game. So if you don't like stickers, turn them off. You save your paint, the stickers won't load in. The other folder, and this is something that a lot of people don't know about, and I anticipate that most people watching this video are beginners, but the car patterns. You have a baseline that you can start with to change and make your custom paints right now. If you'll open this folder, you'll see all of these patterns that are below. In all of these patterns, you can manipulate to your liking to create your own custom paint. Usually, iRacing does include some stock paints like this for most of their cars. But you can turn that off or you can use it. You can't really change this file a lot, but I imagine if you're good with Photoshop, there's a lot of things that you could do with it. Let's turn it off for now. The ones that I really want to show you are these main paint templates here. It varies with how many and design by the car and what's available inside of iRacing. But this will allow you to immediately start painting if you're just beginning in iRacing. You'll notice that they all are uh, red, blue, green. So there's two reasons. One, you can use color select, color range, excuse me, to select the color, the green, the red, whatever it is, select the blue on this one, click OK, go to edit, fill, select color, choose your color, we'll choose something bright so that you know that I definitely changed it, hit OK, and the color's already changed on the car for that pattern. Very convenient. The second reason for this is if you are accustomed to using the RGB channels, you can get much more precise using these and creating a new layer. Now, I'm not going to get into that in this video. We'll talk about that in later uh, videos uh, regarding techniques on how to paint the car. But just know, those are a couple of great options. Keep in mind, the base layer is always there, uh, unless you turn it off, of course. And you don't necessarily have to have it either. You've got another paint already selected in this file, as you can see. But depending on what you're doing, you might need that base layer. So let's close up this paint, uh, paintable area folder. Let's talk about this middle folder. Turn off before exporting TGA. And that is what you simply need to remember. This folder has some items in here that are helpful for you when you're painting, uh, such as the sponsor's block and giving recommendations on where they should go on the car, uh, the number block, 
which will show you where the numbers will be stamped onto the car or where you can place your custom numbers. Car mandatory, and this will vary from car to car on what mandatory stamps will be always be placed on the car regardless. Uh, you've also got a mask in here, so as you can see, the outline and body parts of the car. And then another key feature is this wire frame. And the wire diagram allows you to really see uh, the contours of the car when you're painting. Now, there is one little tip that you should know about the wire frame. You can change the color of this wire frame. It's white right now but let's say you're working on a car that is solid white there if you'll scroll in you'll notice you can't really see uh, the wireframe at all this could pose a problem uh, when you're painting the car knowing where the boundaries are within the wire and where you're trying to place your items so what you can do with that wire is use a color overlay effects color overlay and well you know what we'll go with the red and now you can see that we can completely see the wire on that white car so keep that in mind as far as a tip always remember to turn this off when you export your final file that you're going to upload to trading paints or place inside of your iRacing uh, paint folder the reason you want to do that is a couple one in case you've got the wire frame on uh, that way it will not be stamped all over your car um, you know I'm sure you see that on occasion uh, people with paints with a wire frame stamped on it uh, second uh, you don't want any potential double stamping if something got slightly off or moved uh, that was in this folder that uh, may t come into play such as uh, the car mandatory which will be stamped on by iRacing so just always be in the habit of turning that off so that you know exactly uh, what you're uh, getting is a clean image now the the final folder turn this on just so it's easier on the eyes the final folder is the custom spec map folder and I will have a detailed video for this coming up later too this is more graduate level painting uh, unless you are familiar with how uh, the spec map works if you are you're likely not watching this video but keep in mind inside the spec folder you have a red channel metallic and a green channel it's listed as roughness between these two channels it will allow you to manipulate the paint and stickers or anything else on the car that you have painted on to give it different textures being a shiny metallic finish or it might be a chrome finish or it could be a matte or plastic type finish but these two files will allow you to manipulate that on the car. This is also a separate file that has to be saved inside of uh, the iRacing folder or uploaded to Trading Paints as a MIP file. Again, we'll get into that when we start talking about the custom spec maps. And it will look something like this. Okay, you can see the difference as I turn it off and on. And that is the spec map data that needs to go to the system in order to tell the car and the game how to render that particular material. What you're seeing right now is just the baseline um, spec map that iRacing applies. To give you an example of kind of how you can organize these files, uh, and what I do, not to say that this is the only way, it's not, it's just my way. We'll go to this car right here, which is a Circuit City car for the 1987 Monte Carlo. You'll notice I have several files in here. I have one at the top, which is the numbers. If we go to the paintable area folder, um, you can see where I have changed a few things in regard to the uh, color change parts. Uh, the color change parts, in this file were base black, but I didn't want them all black. I only wanted the Chevrolet bow tie white. So all I did, duplicate this file, create a mask over each of these, uh, put a mask where uh, the black was blacked out on this file. And on this file, I did a cover, a color overlay of white to make this in the white and masked out the black Goodyear's uh, on the car. Again, just one thing you can do. One thing I highly recommend is separating your folders out. Uh, you'll still see the car patterns folder, 
uh, which is completely empty because I got rid of the patterns. Uh, I didn't need them for this car and it just uh, helps to kind of, it's just house, house cleaning. Uh, I do have the base layer. You can see I have a stickers layer and that folder is has all the stickers uh, in the car that I custom that were custom put on. Uh, you can also see uh, the custom striping that was placed on the car has its own folder. And then you've got just, again, that base red paint. So this is a pretty simple build. Why I do that and why I highly recommend it is the flexibility that separating your stickers, your striping, uh, your base color into different folders is when it comes to the spec map, guys. Okay, so let me turn this spec map on. Now, you'll see here in the red channel, okay, and in the green channel, that I have copied all those files, numbers, stickers, stripes, patterns, uh, to each channel. And this allows me to manipulate what the car materials will look like. So for an example, uh, in this car, I have this, I have a particular setting that I use for stickers to kind of give it a bit more of a plastic look to look like that it has been placed on the car. The red is a bit more uh, shiny and the white is a bit more of a matte. And to uh, show you that, let me pull the car up and now you can see what I'm referring to. So as you move the car around in the light, you can see the different reflective materials and how the light plays off of those materials based upon the information it has received from that spec map. So that red is pretty shiny. Uh, it's not exactly uh, metallic quite. It's more kind of aluminum, I would, I would say. But you can tell that the Circuit City uh, stickers on here look like well stickers which is uh what i want them to look like and if you zoom in here a little bit to the white you'll see that that has a bit more of a matte finish so it's more of a flat white and doesn't start to have any sheen to produce you know, it to, to make it go toward the chrome side because white will go chrome again just an example of what you can do uh, once you get accustomed to using the paint template here in iRacing. I hope that gives you a general explanation of the folders. And in the coming videos, we're gonna start to get into what I do to paint and what you can do and some tips. So thanks for watching. If this video helped you, consider hitting that like button. It really helps the channel. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload any additional content. Follow me on Twitter find out when I'm streaming. Thanks for watching.